introduction. Uh, let's transition on to uh, St Thomas uh, Steerbergen. Uh, Thomas, please take it away. Thank you, Dave. Let me start the screen share. That's the one. All right. Let me see if this all works. If everything works, you should see my presentation. Yes. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to show a little bit on how uh, we generate an S bomb uh, for your code uh, in CI CD using Open Source Toolkit. Um, a little bit about myself I am the head of open source for Here Technologies, um, but I'm also active in uh, um, several open source projects listed here as we're trying to build basically a complete open source uh, tool chain to do basically false, comply false reviews basically in CI CD. So we have the tooling other what that we are working on. I work on. I'm the lead for the um, SPDX defects group. Uh, then I also am in open source tooling group, open chain working on the processes, create the find work on the data, and finally the, uh, I'm one of the co-founders and organizers of the To Do Group Europe to basically work together as open source offices. And all of that is really needed to uh, basically be able to produce uh, quality S bombs. Um, so I'll start, but where I come from, basically, it's an, and the easiest way to, for my situation, for where I work from, is uh, Open Chain. Open Chain is the ISO standard for basically your open uh, open source compliance process, and it basically has two things: know your obligations, certify your obligations. Um, this is a little bit focused on licensing, but it actually covers now. Uh, open Chain is also expanding now uh, to cover security vulnerabilities as well. Um, but basically what open chain in their material says, what do you need to get? And this kind of overlaps uh, uh, already the whole, um, uh, what we need basically in an SBOM. And it's a long list of things that you need to get. So uh, this is where we basically started. It was like, okay, that makes all sense. Yeah, we can implement it. How do we, um, this list also matches what we have to send to our customers. Let's see what we, uh, how we get that information. So, um, then we started comparing uh, software component analysis tools, and uh, we had these, um, after a little bit of research, we basically came down to five questions that we, we were mostly comparing uh, tools on. And the number one question is like, uh, which software components are included? And uh, we found huge variety between various tools. And, uh, um, the main reason for that is that build tools are meant to build code and they're not designed to build an SBOM. So uh, SBOM is kind of an, an after fact. They are, basically developers are happy if their code builds. Uh, producing an SBOM is not an, was not a design goal from the get-go from the build tool most of the time. So as a result, mostly most software composition analysis tool on the market generally do a best effort approach uh, um, to figuring out what is actually in uh, a particular software project. And that makes that the software bill of materials very different and it, um, it may differ on the method that they use. So there's dynamic analysis where you actually execute the build tool. There are static analysis where you try to mimic the build tool or try to log log files. All of these produce uh, different results. Then the second thing that we were looking at, if a, um, a tool tells me it has a particular finding, where there's a vulnerability finding or license finding. Can you show where they got it? Uh, and there's a, um, you don't always get this. A lot of tools, for instance, don't show if they tell license is applicable in an SBOM where they got it from. So for us, this was crucial because we need to basically um, know that the licenses that are being told by our tooling are, uh, are we need to be able to verify them. And the next thing that we looked at, which was really uh, a big thing for us, we have a particular way and how we think about uh, in my organization of how we, how we do our open source policy, how we make risk decisions. And uh, we wanted to implement that in our tooling. We wanted to automate, automate, automate. And fairly early on, we discovered that it is, is really difficult with a lot of the existing tools uh, because they mostly offered us kind of like allow deny lists and we don't need to do way more uh, uh, than that. And um, at, 
at first people uh, thought like, oh, may our thinking is different, but as I'm in part of all of these open source uh, communities where I interact with several organizations across the world, we actually figured out that our way of thinking is kind of standard. It's just basically a lot of tools don't allow this level of, uh, of automation uh, yet. And uh, so the next thing that made, was very important for us is uh, here is not a small organization. So we wanted to run everything in produce SBOMs in CICD, but it had to be done at scale. We have uh, hundreds of teams. Uh, um, it needs to be at speed. So when we develop code and, and we have developers 24 seven writing code, but at the same time, <laughs> it needs to be able to do cost efficiently. So it cannot basically be, be fast and, 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 and I work at scale, but have a uh, cost that runs in the tens of millions. Um, and at the same time, we also wanted to make sure that it's uh, it, the level of compliance that we could dictate it. In, for, for internal code, maybe we have a lower level of compliance, but if we ship, for instance, to cars, uh, you cannot mess up. If we ship software to cars, we want to have to be able to set the highest level of compliance. And finally, we looked at, can we edit an S-bomb? Um, um, people might ask why? Well, no tool is 100% correct uh, because open source is free, but that also means that you cannot take any guarantees on it. Uh, from our um, studies what we an experience, what we looked at, um, about 20 to 30% of the open source that we see flying around has some kind of issue. Um, and it may be a metadata issue, maybe a licensing issue. A very common issue, for instance, is that the code repository is, is moved. So the metadata says, oh, this package, my uh, source code is there, but in reality, the source code is, is somewhere else. And then you need to be able to fix that up. So, and this is, a, I added this slide because this is really something I wanted to make clear, like, um, a lot of tools are now being capable of generating an SBOM, but, as there are many best efforts, they are basically maybe not usable for automating your open source policy, uh, your organizational uh, policies. Um, this is also not so much a surprise because SBOMs are, well, not, for me, they're not relatively new, but for most of the people in the world, it's only since last, last year. Like, again, you need a lot more information um, to produce a high quality SBOM that you can. Uh, automate on and really automate your, 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 your policy. So it's not about generating it. And uh, that's, that's step one, but step two is actually making sure that you have a high quality one, that the data is, is actually accurate and that it's actually traceable. So again, some of the tooling challenges that we saw, again, missing data, missing sources, uh, ways of working issues are also very, very, very fun where the build tool recommends a particular way of working and then the, the the developers working on it do something completely different. I already mentioned uh, a build tool uh, and dependency tool issues that are they're not really designed for, for fossil fuels or S-bombs. Then when you have a large number of build tools. So in my organization is about 30 different uh, build tools that, that we, uh, the dependency tools that we use. And then you have to, uh, when you do all of that together, you have to handle a massive amount of, of, of scan results, basically, because we do license scanning for everything done. So we can produce the, the license, we can include licensing in, the, in our S-bombs, but then you need to be able to process all of that. Um, and yeah, so this required something, uh, Different. So um, luckily, um, solving challenges is uh, what uh, we engineers do. Um, so what did we do? Uh, we started building our, our own tooling and we open sourced it. It's now a Linux Foundation project. And our approach is slightly different uh, than lot. So we open sourced it. We are basically building it with the community for the community. So it's um, mostly a um, a group of open source offices that basically wanted better tooling and basically decided to work together to uh, to, to produce it. Um, and, and we basically, the tool uses mostly data directly from the build tool. So we, we always use build tool information first before we use static analysis. We have multiple methods to fix the SBOM. Our policy rules to, to basically generate and, and verify if an SBOM is correct. We, it's basically written as code. So you can write whatever you wanna do. And the tooling was designed as a, a component pipeline that you can really use in your organization because there's so many different ways that people build code. So you need to be able to be flexible, build a pipeline so you can produce your SBOM. And we build it on top of uh, open standards uh, like SPDX because basically we don't want a tool lock in. Uh, my successor in 20 years must still be able to use the SBOMs that, that I produce. 
so this kind of is how it uh, it looks like end to end. Um, basically, to produce a an, an SBOM, the first step is we ask our developers to indicate what is actually the code in your code repository that is uh, not included in in the in what is released. So that allows you to create kind of like a complete SBOM for the code repository and an SBOM for all of the release artifacts. So the developers indicate this in a YAML file and that allows our automation to basically process it. The next step, basically it builds up a dependency tree. We support, I think, 20 different uh, um, build tools and dependency managers now. Um, what, once we have a dependency tree, the tool will download the, the source code. Uh, we do this for to do a license scanning, but also uh, certain licenses require you to give the source code uh, to any consumer. And for also, it's also a little bit of, um, business continuity because uh, yeah, things on the internet have a, have a tendency to disappear. Then we scan it. Uh, that's basically a standard copyright license scanner. We use scan code for that. Then we put it to our, our evaluator and uh, basically we check with all of the rules, make sure that everything is okay. And the whole goal of these checks is to basically at the end with our report or produce a, an accurate uh, um, um, SBOM where all of the license information and security vulnerability basically that is all that is, that is correct. Um, how can you integrate this in a CICD pipeline? So this is how we are, are doing it. We basically have the, the scanner running in the CICD pipeline continuously, um, and uh, it will produce a scan report that outlines what needs to be fixed. Then the users can get help via a, a giant ticket system or support. And what we on the other side have is you cannot review every scan report if you run things at scale. So on the other side, we have an audit process where we basically um, at scale basically check the reports that were generated in the SBOMs. And if there is something wrong there, we basically create an audit ticket to basically say like, hey, um, here's something wrong. Uh, and when the ticket is created, it will basically show up in the in the scan report to basically in, to nudge the developers like, hey, um, the SBOM that you produce might not be um, accurate. You need to take a step. Um, and the way how our rules work is, uh, which is on the bottom, the okay, not okay to use a particular package. So this might be, um, um, it's, our tool is called open source with a toolkit, but actually you can use um, both closed source and open source. You can both review both of them uh, um, to, with it and produce as ones for them. So we, this is the, the formula. So we look at the code context of uh, how something is used, the license context, how it is in the, in the product. So we can produce different as bombs depending on uh, the, the, what type of product we are producing, the level of detail or and all stuff. And uh, finally the security context. Uh, now I would like to just show you actually the thing hands-on, which is what uh, I think most people will be interested in. Um, so what I did is I took a project um, uh, called Mime Types on uh, on GitHub, and I forked it internally to my personal um, uh, uh, GitLab. And why did I do this? Well, that allows me to add the so-called GitLab.ci uh, file to it. This allows you to define uh, um, a CI/CD pipeline for a particular project. So what it does then is in the pipeline, and I'm just showing it at a high level for people not familiar with GitLab, this is kind of how a GitLab pipeline looks like, where at first it will basically install all of the dependencies, and then in the test stage, it will um, um, basically do separate tests. And one of the tests that we've added is the, the ORT scan, as we call this, and this will basically execute the um, 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 open source toolkit to basically produce the SBOM. Um, ORT supports actually, besides running it in CICD, you can actually run ORT directly as well. So we use both. So uh, this is the same pipeline, but this is where I just executed directly the pipeline. So here you kind of give you an idea. Um, why do we do this? Uh, well, we have lots of cases where people are, are asking us like, hey, can I take this open source component out there and add it to my project and will it then all work? Um, so we do a pre-check and, and the way how we have set it up allows us to just type in any uh, source code location and we can just scan it and produce an SBOM and then verify that the thing is okay, yes or not. So once the scan, uh, once the, this, this is the ORT scan step in a little bit more detail. And so it runs and what it will produce is it will produce so-called job artifacts. And if I click on the, the job artifacts, it will show me uh, the results. 
So this is kind of the results that are, are generated. So in this case, I have two SPDX files here, uh, one in JSON and, and one in, uh, in, in YML. And it also produced some other reports. So uh, one of the things that we do for integration in GitLab, we actually produce the native format of, uh, of, of GitLab. So it will show up in this uh, compliance uh, uh, tab here. Uh, just wanted to show you the report. So again, an, an SBOM is usually in text format is really difficult to understand. So we have a standalone web app. It's a single page application on top of it that allows you to basically navigate a little bit easier all of the data that is in the SBOM. Um, so here you can see exactly that the, in this MIME types, there were 355 unique dependencies. And, uh, and then you can basically browse it with, with like a kind of like a table view where you can filter the, the packages, uh, see the declared license. So it is easier and you can just also see just like a browsable tree. And what we also do is, uh, and that's particularly through our tooling, you see these things are grayed out. This is because the developer has marked what is used for uh, dependency. So here we use SPDX, um, uh, SPDX has a thing called relationships, where you can indicate relationships between uh, packages. So here you see this one is grayed out. And if I hover over it, it says it's a dev dependency, meaning that this dependency is only used for development. So this is how we uh, can produce basically an SBOM for all of it, or just what, in this case, what is what we call uh, uh, release. So if I only want to get the things that are released, I just look at it and you see that this is the only two packages that are actually um, shipped. Now, if I then, uh, what we also can do is we can look a little bit deeper. So we uh, have all of the scan results. So we see actually if, if it says MIT, we can directly see uh, uh, where that MIT comes from because we have the actual um, scan results uh, uh, with it. And finally, I just wanted to show you uh, one of the SPDXs uh, that we produce. So here you can see this is the same same data in JSON with all of the information that we basically um, um, capture. So this is kind of in a in a nutshell how we um, uh, produce an SBOM using OSS toolkit. In in this case, GitLab. You can also do it for GitHub. It's uh, pretty similar. Um, that's about it. Uh, I think um, I would like to take some questions. Let's see if there are some questions. I don't know how I'm looking at time. Can you run it directly in Jenkins pipelines? Yes, uh, we actually have a Jenkins file uh, uh, available that you can um, run it. Uh, basically, it's all a Docker image and you can run it wherever you want it, whether it's uh, uh, Jenkins, GitLab, GitHub, or a Bitbucket, you name it, it's, it's relatively straightforward. David, how am I looking on time? I think I'm... Your, your, your time is looking good. Uh, I probably should forward on a question from the last one. Do you, uh, what about uh, build time, you know, tooling uh, information uh, in, in, in terms of the tools being used during, for the build? Yeah, so we capture this in the, um, it's not that in the SPT access one, but we do capture it in our intel. So we look at uh, what the information that we capture, for instance, is the, uh, for instance, with an NPM project, we'll capture which version of NPM uh, was used to produce uh, the, 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 the SBOM, because actually the SBOMs can differ depending on what kind of uh, uh, version of the package manager you have installed. So we try to capture all of the information uh, um, possible that was used so that you can exactly recreate the, the same SBOM, basically. Okay, uh, you've got a couple more questions in the chat. If you could uh, take yep. a stab at them. <laughs> How are SBOM and security SP domains are connecting the dots? Um, so uh, SPDX originally came from the licensing side. Uh, uh, so working at license compliance, but now as at um, the working group that I'm leading, the defects group is working on adding security vulnerabilities to it. Uh, you can find it on the um, on, on GitHub. 
And so basically what we're now trying to do is make it a complete software bill of material. So we include, uh, and, it, and it's gonna be, um, SPEC 3.0 is gonna be kind of like a profile spec. So we have a base spec where you can just model a base SBOM, so basically the package data. Um, and then on top of it, you kind of have like, I, optionally add licensing data, optionally add security data. There is talk about uh, a, a full provenance one. Um, so you really can pick and choose what you want. And it's uh, it's much more flexible than the, the current 2.0 version in, uh, in Superdome. So we have what we're trying now to connect is basically capture all the information of interest. So both licensing and security in one standard. When editing the generate SPS file, uh -huh, uh, Yes. Uh, so to answer that question, I don't, so I should explain that we don't directly edit the uh, the generated uh, um, SPDX file. What we do is during the generation of the SPDX file, we have a mechanism called uh, curations, and um, we capture we we basically capture that. Uh, so we allow you to fix things beforehand. So. The, um, one of the issues that we saw is basically you don't want to generate the SBOM for one team, but you want if you find a particular issue, you want to fix it for all teams. So what we do is we have a central in the tooling, we have a mechanism called creations where it allows you to patch all the patch data and then all of the generated SBOMs will be uh, fixed. And in the uh, our reports, we show the kind of uh, what we call creations that have been applied. And we, we keep track of the, in our case, the, the, the creations are maintained in a separate uh, Git repository. Actually, I can just show you that how that looks like uh, because I have one here. Uh, so we maintain all of the, the, the patches in a uh, configuration repository. Um, so that's here. And uh, I think there are, yes, to give you an idea of how these creations look like. Uh, so, for instance, here uh, we try to find out the uh, the version of a software package. So you would patch this in our in the configuration files of the the tool. These configuration files are version controlled, and basically the hash and the location of that code repository is included in the report. It's not yet in the SBOMs in our tool. And this is something that we're actually going to fix with SPX 3.0 because then we get better fields to to capture all of this provenance information. Uh, but in the tool ourselves, we have already all of the information. It's just basically we're still, SPX 3.0 is still a work in progress and we're working on, on getting all of these fields defined. But yeah, once SPX 3 is ready, we can just add all of the information uh, there. Uh, are the rules publicly available? Uh, yes, example rules are available and I'm actually working on publishing most of our policy rules. Um, uh, so that people can exactly reproduce what we're doing. Generally, from us, from my open source office, we try to open source everything that we, we do. Um, the only exception that that is uh, how we think about licensing, but for that, we will uh, have other examples from our buddies at Stencode. So yeah, you will be able to fully reproduce uh, how we do things basically uh, um, as a almost um, turnkey solution, hopefully. Uh, did I miss any other questions? Component supplier idea info. Yeah, I know that uh, SPDX includes all the NTI minimum elements, so I'm not sure what the uh, confusion is. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll, when we, uh, when we uh, uh, let somebody else pick up that question, Thomas, why don't you go on to the next one? Uh, does Orch catch uh, results by CIA? So, um, what ORT does currently is we cache the, one, we, when we scan a dependency, it's only scanned once. Uh, and then we basically reuse that. Uh, we, the caching between CI jobs is actually a very complicated thing. Uh, because if you know how the build tools really work, you'll be surprised that if you, that is for some of them, if you don't change a single line of your code, the, the dependency trees between the two things may change. And why is that? Because you largely depends on the open source community and the open source community doesn't stand still. Um, so unless you lock down all of your dependencies, uh, um, it might it might change. And even then, even with log files, if you have things locked down file, uh, the some of the, the um, package managers see a log file as just a input and depending on situations, they might choose a different dependency group, uh, groups. 
Uh, doesn't support Helm charts. No, nope, it's not yet on the list. You can actually see on our on our GitHub page, we have a list published and we're basically working continuously to, to, to add more things. Let me see if I, yeah, this is the, uh, the complete list. As I said, we're, we're primarily focusing first at the source code level so that we're able to build a source code level SBOM um, so that then can be included into the artifacts and then you can do get deployment and all the other stuff. But again, lots of tooling we're missing to have a good tool to basically produce SBOMs at source code level. Uh, but that's step one. And the next step is for instance, looking at, uh, okay, you know, you produce an, R an RPM, how does it work uh, or produce it and say a jar and now you package it in R RPM and then how do we power process that? Yeah, uh, Th Thomas, I think we've got a clarification on other question. Um, SPDX has it, but it wasn't clear that you were capturing that data. So <laughs> your, your tool, no, your tool. Oh, your yeah. yeah. Was. We, Sorry, we, so we, misunderstood the question. Yeah, so the, the SPDX has a package supplier field. Uh, uh, but so it depends whether the package manager has it or, or, or not. And most things don't have a package supplier field. So it's mostly the copyright information. Uh, that's there. So we capture uh, uh, the source code locations, uh, the, the binary artifacts, basically anything that's pretty much available from the package manager, uh, we, 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 cap we capture it and then we map it basically uh, to, to, to the SBOM. So, so the real challenge is you need to, you and I think many others need to push back and say, hey, wait a minute, <laughs> we don't have the data, therefore we can't capture it please yeah. add this information so that we can yeah. capture it. Yeah, and so, but also in the in the traditional sense, if you look at a package supplier, I, I, again, it makes sense for a closed source package uh, to have a package supplier in this case, but for open source packages, it's the community most of the time. So um, they don't have a legal entity. It's just usually the name of the project and the name of the project we anyways have in the, in the, in the package identifier. Um, so, Again, for for, for for closed source software, capturing the package supplier makes sense, but I know most of the package metadata files don't really have a field for that at all. So what you can do is we can regenerate it by using the other information, the package metadata to, to generate one, but uh, yeah, we already have it already. All right. So it, Thomas, if you don't mind, uh, I really like being five minutes ahead so that we've got a little slack. Hey, I, I, I tried to keep uh, your five minutes intact. I actually gave you two more minutes extra, so. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. So thank you so very, very much, uh, Thomas, for uh, all your time and all this information. Uh, really appreciate it.